the Constitution, does it mean anything now? Uh, Constitution, whatever that thing was uh, it, it, when they first dreamed it up, um, it's in <laughs> secret with its curtains drawn and not telling anybody and sealing the records in there for 30 years so nobody could see them. Does that sound familiar? Yeah. Uh, whatever that was and then whatever the made up ratification process, whatever it was, it died in 1861 because it's completely impossible to fight a war to hold a voluntary union together. It doesn't matter what you're fighting about. If you want to go down and fight to free slaves, which that wasn't what the war was about. But if you want to, great, I get it. Go down. But then you can't then claim that those states have been brought back in on a voluntary basis. Right. That's preposterous. You can't have them both. If you want to go down there and claim to be a do-gooder, which they, they weren't. But if you want to claim to be a do-gooder, okay, more power to you. Sign up, tell everybody you did that. But then don't pretend that we're living in the greatest, freest, and it's a voluntary union of uh, states or people. It's not. Did, and they, so, did they force the South to join the union? Uh, well, if, a after the war, it was time to re-up. Of course, what they claim is that the official history is that uh, it was a rebellion. It was a rebellion. Well, there wasn't a rebellion. It was the people in each individual state voted to leave. They voted. And not in mass. They didn't just start rioting and try to tear things down. They weren't trying to take over Washington, D.C. and claim that everybody in, in other states had to also have slaves. None of that happened. Right. <laughs> We're told our vote is the most sacred thing in the world. OK, well, hardly anybody could vote back there anyway. But of the people who supposedly could vote, they voted to leave and start their own country. I don't understand. How can that not be OK? That doesn't make <laughs> right. any sense to me. That's they voted to leave. And then the official story is that those votes weren't possible. They they were a, a legal nullity. That's what, in effect, the Supreme Court held in Texas v. White. And that was actually just a case over money. It had nothing to do with caring about anything else. But the bonds wouldn't have been uh, valuable if they had found anything else. And so to keep the charade going that we're the greatest, freest, we fight for freedom, the Constitution protects us and all this nonsense that people believe and are taught, they have to have it as this rebellion. And, you know, the person that's, I think, the greatest voice on that was Lysander Spooner. He was both said that there's no treason for uh the Southern soldiers who uh, fought the Union, and they did try to do And he also was the biggest abolitionist. He also wrote all the sorts of reasons why the slavery itself was completely wrong and totally unjustified under the Constitution. And that's a consistent position. See, they, what they've done now is they've turned it into, if you take the position I do, which is the Civil War was in the Civil War. Yeah. Nobody was, they weren't trying to get control of Washington and win. Washington went down there and killed all the people, burned all their stuff, committed endless war crimes, and then wants to pretend like they were down there to save uh, the slaves. And none of that happened. And whatever the Constitution was prior to 1861, and I think it had maybe some small amount of validity before that, whatever it had since then is completely gone. When I, I grew up in Alabama, down in, uh, Montgomery, Tuskegee area. And growing up, I remember when the Confederate flag was not a racist flag. It was a sense of pride, and there were black people and white people who took pride in the Confederate flag. And now they're making it, they have made the Confederate flag look like the enemy of the country. It made it, right. it, 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 it I, I couldn't, I didn't know, I couldn't comprehend that at first. Now that I'm right. older, I understand how good and evil work, but I couldn't understand how they successfully turned the Confederate flag into a racist, so-called racist, a race issue when it wasn't about that at all. Right. And the war wasn't about that. It was about a it was about a lot of different things. It's not that slavery was no part of it. Of course it was. But the reality in the South was only about 25 percent of the people in the South even owned a slave. Yeah. And and only about two percent of the people in the South owned any more than one slave. All, all, all the vast majority of people had one slave who had even had a slave. And like I said, only 25 percent even had a, even a single slave. And for the most part, they were not significantly worse off in most situations than poor workers are today or yes, back then. Absolutely. That's the reality. And it was a very small group. One or two percent of the people down there had all the slaves. They had these huge amounts of slaves and they ran them. OK, well, does that sound familiar to people today? About one or two percent <laughs> running. Yes, it's the exact same system. And the idea that when you have one or two percent of the people have basically all the slaves, 
How are you going to motivate all those people, 75% of whom have no slaves at all? Why would they fight a war to keep something they don't even have? And the 25%, when you only have basically all of them only have one slave, um, believe me, they're not fighting to keep that slave. It's, It's just... It's just a fantasy. It's a it's a story that they're told because it sounds good. And the reality is terrible, which is that the union wanted to hold it together because it's a banker's war like everything else. So they could exploit people. <laughs> it's always about exploiting people. Yeah. That's all the government does is Absolutely. exploit people Absolutely. and they divide and conquer us and then c- exploit everybody they can. That's what this so-called civil rights le- uh, movement was all about. I think one of the worst things that ever happened to black. The blacks, it was abortion and the so-called civil rights movement. And it's, uh, it's destroyed the, it's, it's completely destroyed it. I mean, it, it was doing great. Yeah, it was what? segregated, but it was doing great yes. compared to what it is now. Absolutely. And, and, and black, most, not all, not all, but most black people have not been able to return to a normal life since the so-called civil rights movement happened. It was all about brainwashing and controlling the people. But what's so interesting to me, maybe I'm just old, but what's so interesting interesting to me is that the blacks won't even pull aside for a moment to question, well, what was this really all about? Why is it that the blacks are worse off today than they were before the so-called civil rights movement? Why is it that prior to the civil rights movement, blacks and whites got along? They knew it was a spiritual issue, right and wrong, good versus evil. They were not into this thing called racism. Racism didn't even exist. I never heard the word. And I grew up on a plantation. Pick cotton. Have you ever picked cotton? No. But you I, have I've not it. lived till you pick <laughs> cotton. But it wasn't all about that at all. But yet, uh, Martin Luther King and all those guys turned it into that. And it's just been devastating to the blacks ever since. Devastating. It's like everything else. I mean, you're not allowed to talk about anybody. It's not that there aren't people who do it. They do talk about it, but they will try to quiet you. They will try to threaten you. They will try to uh, trap you in some other form or fashion because the narratives are so fundamentally untrue and they have to remain untrue in order for the system to prop up that they just can't allow any free discussion of any honest facts. They have to just name call you. And yeah. it's there's no way around it at this point because they got such a tight control in the media and the education systems and all of the financial systems so that if you just start, step out of line the slightest little bit, something you said in social media 10 years ago, well, now you're destroyed. Well, everything's everything's some kind of government licensing. Now you got a problem with your government license. You can lose your license. You can lose your certifications. You can lose your business. You can get all sorts of things. It's also centrally controlled that, you know, they always want to divide the people. Always. 